So today we're going to have a little talk about single firing versus salvo firing in battleships specifically, where accuracy matters quite a bit since we are very focused on alpha damage. Doesn't matter as much in DDs and a lot of lighter cruisers since, of course, we're just going for DPM and it's pretty convenient to just hold mouse one. But in battleships, we want that accuracy. And a lot of you probably noticed in the Dancing Grobers video, if you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out. A very fun experience in brawls had to be had there. But I was single firing my guns a lot of the time in a battleship. I wasn't even holding mouse one. It was single clicks every time, each turret individually. And you might be wondering why I've been doing that. Well, I've noticed that sometimes Salvo Fire feels like it just doesn't have any sort of lock on accuracy, whether that's a bug or shells landing short. I found that I just wasn't getting those satisfying salvos into broadsides. Look at the dispersion you're seeing. Is that really all that common? <laughs> it's a pretty nice uh, opening salvo into a battleship there, certainly. But this is the reason that I've kind of been experimenting here. This is not me with extensive testing telling you definitively that single firing your turrets is the correct way to play. This is me experimenting after getting quite frustrated with missing a lot of broadside targets at relatively close range when salvo firing and trying out single clicks. This one we get basically only our back turrets online and we still absolutely smash the Worcester. <laughs> Two salvos, 67k, we'll take it. Basically, the idea comes down to if I'm going to get one batch of RNG in a salvo fire that is susceptible to all sorts of aim bugs, lock-on issues, island bugs, shells landing short, all these things, or just plain old bad RNG, why don't I just roll the dice a few more times? That way I get four rolls per salvo, uh, or the equivalent of 12 shells in the air, rather than just one. And the other thought might be that we get ourselves a little more opportunity to regain lock-on. Maybe there's some sort of server-side blip or issue or lag or something where the server doesn't know that I'm locked on when I'm shooting. I don't know. I actually don't have any idea what's going on. But that was another, like, 20k salvo into the Sevastopol there, not even getting any citadels. Just very, very accurate. This isn't really something that is really quantifiable. Like, testing this is just basically impossible. This is really all about feeling like things are a little better. There was kind of a double click. We fired one gun and then the three next turrets after when he went dark. And we still got an amazing salvo. So I'm not here to say that salvo fire will never work. In fact, it's going to work most of the time. But for whatever reason, in the last half a week or week that I've been trying out this single fire, I feel like I've been doing a lot better. I feel like my salvos have been more consistent. The guns have just had tighter groupings when I'm looking at them. Even if they're not going to do massive damage, like this salvo here, we're going to shatter, unfortunately. Um, but the dispersion, the grouping looked really, really good. So I feel like I can have a little more confidence in my aim because of that. And I'm definitely enjoying when we get games like this where people are sitting broadside and I am actually able to punish them. That's not always the case. And honestly, that's one of the more frustrating things in this game for me, even above subs and carriers, honestly. I think finding someone who's flat broadside at pretty close range and not being able to do any sort of meaningful damage to them, it's pretty annoying. And since I've been playing this game so long and I've kind of learned the ins and outs of it, there's not really that beginner room to kind of explain it away as, oh, maybe I did something wrong here. There's a lot of scenarios where I just catch someone broadside and then dispersion will say no, or maybe there'll be a shells landing short bug, or I don't know what's happening. And that really does get to me. So anything I can do to mitigate that, I will try, including really, really dumb single turret firing. <laughs> That's <laughs> something traditionally we would all say you should never be doing. You should only be salvo firing, if at all possible. And yet this has been working, so I'm going to keep trying it. I'm not going to say it's going to magically make the game 100% dev strikes and games like this where we're absolutely crushing people every match, but I am saying you should try it. Uh, definitely give it a go and tell me how it goes for you. I think that... It might be a bit of an issue with the way the aiming system works or with the way the servers are interacting. There might be just too much data incoming to the server at one time and 
it loses track of you being locked on or something. I suppose if we're going down the, this is maybe a bug uh, topic here. <laughs> It could be a bug that single firing your guns gives you better dispersion or better lock on or something, <laughs> which is a rather terrifying thought. Uh, if that's the case, Wargaming, please don't fix. I would like this dispersion to stay. I really do enjoy having a little more consistency. Um, other than that, though, I think one of the things we as a community have kind of had a meme that's kind of sprung from some truth is back turret, best turret, is it not? I'm sure you've heard of that one before, definitely coming from things like Yamato, uh, certainly one of the battleships that have, has been in the game the longest and is often in a situation where you're not shooting all your turrets at once, you'll shoot your front two and then just happen to have a target for your back turret and it'll just do massive damage out of nowhere. Well, that's not a salvo fire, that's a single turret. I don't know, I'm not sure if that's really a great uh, great explanation of this. Um, but again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Definitely give this a shot. Because a game like this one, where we're already over 200,000 damage, just like this, running the enemy team off the map, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Especially after the day I was having on this one. I was having a rough time in ranked uh, on this day that this battle happened. And this was basically right at the end of when I was streaming. And oh boy, it was a breath of fresh air. It was a nice way to end the stream, actually. Feeling like, oh yeah, battleships are actually going to do some damage when people are broadside. But that is going to be a victory in this match. And don't worry, we'll talk about the build here. I haven't really talked about the ship here, Montana. That doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, you do want to be playing an accurate battleship, though, I would say. Um, don't be trying to do this in, like, Columbo. <laughs> I doubt you'll notice much of a difference there. Uh, but we do get ourselves a nice 220k top score. And a lot of citadels there, man. It was like six citadels and very, very nice accuracy, I gotta say. And as for this Monty build, very much a ranked focus build. I have the luxury of having an insane amount of elite commander XP, so I'm willing to retrain from just a randoms build. But you should know that Montana can just do really well like this no matter what. So if you're just running a normal build, don't feel like you need to swap over. But I am running in a... Uh, Bit of a secondary build here. The main buff here is gonna be close quarters combat, giving us 10% reload. Monty secondaries aren't gonna do all that much. They are decent. Uh, they do have the reload of Ohio secondaries and the fire chance, 10% fire chance here. So no joke. The only difference is the accuracy, much, much worse accuracy than Ohio. So you're not gonna be hitting nearly as often. So they're not nearly as useful. I'm not even taking extra healing though, which seems a little odd, but Considering how ranked games typically go, I'm not usually getting myself to that fifth heal unless I am playing something like an Ohio, which has those fast cooldowns. Our goal is to push in and brawl it out. So concealment expert, not as useful. Definitely want fire prevention though. So maybe if you only have a 10 point commander, you get yourself to fire prevention. You'd probably have most of what this build is capable of, which is kind of nice to see as well. AR, of course, grease the gears since close range combat. We definitely want our turrets to turn around a little quicker and then gun feeder, especially on these improved American commanders is so, so, so good. If you have to swap to the HE, it's a nice tool to have. The upgrades here are definitely going accuracy. <laughs> we're not uh, we're not messing around here, trying to get reload or anything silly like that. We want as accurate a salvos as we put, can possibly get. Doesn't matter if we're double clicking or single firing. Concealment here because none of the other upgrades are really all that good. Poor old ledge mod here on Montana. Don't use it anymore, but I used to love running this thing. It was awesome. You used to give 30% reduced fire and flooding recovery time. Now it's only 10. Um, pretty sad to see that nerf, honestly, because sub 30 second fires meant you basically took no damage from fires. It was awesome. Uh, I guess that's on the main now with its uh, special combat instructions. We'll have to see how that is once that ship is finally released. And again, secondaries, because you don't really need the other stuff, maybe. Uh, it's not like an aiming system is on here. I also really enjoy having 30 second damage controls. That immunity period is pretty nice to have as well. But uh, that is the build. Definitely the video is more skewed towards single fire versus salvo fire. Again, this is not a scientific thing. This is not me saying this is the only way or you have to run it like this. Do whatever is getting you the best results out of your guns. But if you're getting a little frustrated or finding you're having some of those wonky salvos every once in a while when you're focused on salvo firing, maybe give a single fire a look. It seems to be working for me right now, so I'm gonna keep going with it. 
Uh, but again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.